Alrighty, the long wait, for us anyway, is finally over. Um, we've finally got this uh, replacement chassis all the way from the outskirts of uh, the middle of Queensland. And it is in, well, really, really, really good condition. Um, special thanks to Dorian for, uh, well, basically, he pretty much gave this to us. He's just an absolute legend. But, um, look, this thing needs a few minor repairs. Um, but first things first, I'm going to get it off this trailer on some stands, mask up, and uh, hit it pretty hard with a wire wheel. And um, we'll see the extent of the repairs that need to be done. Adolfo's been here to give me a hand and we've um, knocked all of the uh, loose rust off this side anyway. We haven't flicked it over yet. And we've um, just absolutely drenched in rust converter as well just to stop that uh, process from going on. As far as repairs are concerned, we've got the two front, uh, what are they, dumb irons? Dumb yeah. irons, Not too bad. But um, they're certainly salvageable. Um, obviously, we've got the um, the battery bracket. Um, we might be able to salvage that off the old chassis. Adolfo is going to cut that out um, at some stage. If, if we're not, we're probably not going to use it, but at least it'll give me a measurement. Um, bit of a damage there. That needs to be banged out. Bit of welding there. Um, I know that underneath these members, there's um, a little bit of corrosion. Oh, this one's good. But that's okay. Nothing, nothing serious. Like structurally speaking, this thing is an absolute beast. It is so good. I don't, I, yeah, I'm just so happy. Um, these tabs, all of them except for this one, for some reason, this looks like it's brand new, and all the other ones need to be replaced. Whatever. Bit of damage there, and also a whole bunch of pitting through here. So I'll probably have to just cut and put a new piece in. But if we have a look on this angle here too, if you can see it, it's taken a hit in that um, that rear corner too. And you can see it there where it's sort of a little bit bent. But I'm fairly, uh, fairly confident that we'll be able to salvage that as well. So, I mean, <laughs> for an original chassis, this thing's effing unbelievable. Alright, so this was kind of interesting. I've started to... Um attack the dumb irons to do the repairs and I was sort of wondering what this lump of corrosion was that was sort of sitting a few inches behind this open end so when I went and opened the other side to start the repairs there because this one was going to be a bit easier I've noticed that in the original construction they've got like this folded bit of steel here as reinforcement for the um, the attachment points for the uh, bumper and obviously this one's a little bit more intact than the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that obviously because that's uh, that's bloody cancerous rust there. Clean that all up, remake the sides, but I am going to have to actually fabricate some kind of a support for those bolt holes because um, they obviously need them all. The original designers decided that they needed them, so I'll probably... Um, Throw some, uh, throw some bars or box section inside and weld them in before I seal it all up again. But yeah, it's kind of cool the way they decided to make these things back in the day. So here's a little support I came up with, just a bit of angle iron. 
it's uh, pretty thick and it should do the job. I've finished off that section, we just need to um, clean it up and box it off. There's the original um, support that they had in there back in the day, so that bit of angle is uh, as good as, if not better. There we go. All done. There's a lot of, um, I've left the exposed weld because, I mean, if you look at the rest of the car, I mean, these guys didn't even clean up their spatter at all or anything. Everything was sort of left and nothing was cleaned up. So, um, unless Adolfo's got some ob objections, I'll probably sort of, you know, leave it warts and all. It seems to be more in theme of what these cars actually are. But, yeah, that took pretty much a whole day. You think, oh, yeah, I'll knock over a few jobs today. But um, if you want to do them properly... It does take a little bit of time. Anyway, one box ticked. Stuff's getting serious now, so we've um, taken off that top section of the uh, the rear bar because it was just basically cheese. There's the other bit too. Pretty sure the bloke in the factory was getting paid per spot well too. But that's okay. We're getting there. Still got that little bit to take off. But I'll show you just inside. I mean, not many people get to see the inside of these things. Um, pretty well built, but I'm really, really glad I took this off because, uh, yeah, those cheese holes. That's not rust. That's just dirt and Australia's uh, finest Queensland soil, I'm guessing. So um, we'll clean that up. We'll replace this whole section. Um, in the process of replacing it, I've also bent that back into some semblance of shape and um, this bar is now square as well so we'll sort of kill two birds with one stone alright so there we go got the rust converter uh, Soaking away in there, which will uh, do that all a world of good. But um, these compartments were absolutely clogged with soil, as you saw. But um, the, in the insides are actually in reasonable nick. So that rust converter will do its job. We'll give it a bit of a spray maybe as well. Um, this was kind of the last, um, what would you call it, compartment that I, that, you know, I was a little bit worried about. There's another one here, but... You can hear that it's nice and hollow. These compartments here, you can hear there's nothing nasty in there. And the other one, the front one there, and a couple of these beams um, have holes on the other side which need repairs. So when we flip this over, um, if there's anything else lurking, um, we'll be able to clean it out. But um, this section here was probably the last really, really tricky one um, where if you don't do it right, you're just wasting your time. Anyway, let's uh, let's get a top on this bad boy. Alright, I'm just about ready to uh, flip it over, so we'll just do a tour of um, what we've done so far. So, we've replaced the tops of that. As you can see down the line there, that rear bar is perfectly straight now. Um, 
that little support square that's um, exactly where it came off um, it's totally different to that one I don't know if that was just put wherever back in the day but um, I just put it back where it belongs um, replaced all but one of the tabs because they were all pretty rotten and they're all back in there there was a few holes I had to fill up down the bottom of this beam but generally speaking the rear end from the top side's done um, we also replaced both of these brackets here, there and there. They were looking pretty crummy, so we put them back in. It's important to get them nice and square because that's pretty much um, one of the main fixing points of the body. Um, as well as, what else did we do? We fixed up that wing there. That was a little bit rotted away, so I threw a patch piece in. Um, both wings, I won't show you the other side, but they're identical. Um, just a bit thin the steel there it was there were no holes but it was pitted to the point where I thought you know for the sake of a little bit of steel may as well just replace a bloody thing um, we've spoken about the uh, the fronts um, and I've replicated the um, the battery uh, stand battery holder battery bracket whatever you want to call it um, I've made it exactly the same as it was made back in the day. I thought about making improvements and stuff, but I thought, you know what, if it's lasted 50 years, who am I to start mucking around with it? So that's as, as it was built. Factory, I had a reference point from our old chassis, plus the arms that were sort of half rusted away on there. But as far as this, I won't touch it, I only just finished welding it. That's not welded on. Um, because I plan to flip it, I don't really want it to be damaged, and I also need to attack the... Um, the uh, steering uh, server is a server, whatever it is, the bloody thing that um, attaches to the steering, that's all rotted out and pitted and gross. So when I turn it over, that's my next job, and I'm assuming I'll probably need a little bit of access. So one last thing before I flip it over, um, a common um, fail point on these chassis is the radiuses. There, 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 and there. They tend to crack along there. I'll insert a photo here. Uh, make sure you guys check those. It's not not very hard. Grind them out, re-weld them, and you're good to go. But yeah, that was the other bit I fixed. And there's the other wing I was talking about before. All right, we're flipped over. Um, Adolfo came by, so I got excited, and I forgot to film this bit. We just started hacking away. So this is all cheese. So we have started cutting that out. That shouldn't be a big deal. Um, the rest of that beam's got to get done. This beam here is a little bit cheesy, but it's not too bad. It's just mainly the top that needs a bit of love. The actual sides are in reasonable condition. Um, we've got to fix up the other side of where we patched. There's a few bits over there. And now that I've got it upside down, I can fix that dint as well. Um, and I've also got this hole that's sort of worn to the shizen that I need to uh, add some steel and get creative with. But other than that, we should be okay. I honestly think the steel was never in there, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know. It's a bit gross. Something's happened there. It's either rusted away or somebody's gotten creative, one or the other. Farm of maintenance. Yeah. Once this gets... Well, this is a hard bit. Once we get this done, we're laughing. Before I close this all up, I thought I'd show you sort of my solution for this servo. So I happen to have a bit of pipe lying around, 76 OD with a, the right um, internal diameter with a little bit of cleaning um, is the perfect size for the servo. So I've welded that in as far as I can around the bottom um, and I've welded around the top. Now rather than double skinning it like the original one did, I've just used this thick plate because there's a dust cover that's got to get tapped into it and it provides a little bit of rigidity. But rather than um, skimming another plate over the top of that, when I come to replace this, I'm just going to blend that straight into there and that'll be um, the top of the beam. Um, less opportunities for rust.
let's do a walk around uh, of all the repairs on the bottom before I flip it over for the last time. So there's the front bar, that's all fully welded now with a pipe going through for the servo. I've still got a little bit of welding to do from the other end just to finish that up, but that came up really nicely. Here were the um, the holes that were pretty much um, almost non-existent. That one was pretty good. I've just um, sort of done a pad weld and built the weld up to make life a bit easier for when uh, it all goes on. We might have to uh, grind some more off. We'll see when we do a fitment before we actually paint the thing. Moving along, motor mount, patch in the middle from that bent bit. I was going to try and straighten it, but then I thought, why bother? I'll just throw some new steel in there. Use the old uh, three-in-one roller to get that radius going. Not perfect, but enough for me to fettle it in. Um, there was a few minor repairs there where there were some cracks. There was a dint or sort of a gouge there where it had taken a decent hit, so we've cut that out and patched that out. That was where that big nasty dint on the bottom was. Um, Adolfo helped me fix that up yesterday and cut me a, a piece. Um, that discoloration you're seeing, I've only just hit it with the rust converter, so it looks a bit wet and weird and wonderful, which is the rust converter working away, just doing its magic. So yeah, that one's all done. I just remembered there was a little hole there I filled. I've got to grind that before I flip it over. And finally, just a little bit of clean up on the um, the repair we did from the other side. But um, other than that, we're getting very, very close now. All right. Um, I'm literally 10 minutes away from finishing this thing and uh, surprise, surprise, we've run out of bloody mix shield. Um, that's always the case, but such is life anyway. I'll probably end it here as far as the video is concerned. All that I've got left to do is uh, weld this in, as you can see. I just tacked it when I started running out of gas. That's got to get welded in the battery holder. And I've also got a couple of, because this is uh, obviously an earlier chassis, the later chassis came with um, sort of like a bit of angle iron or folded steel as a, um, as a brace between here and there on both sides. So I'll quickly do them, knock them up, but um, for all intents and purposes, uh, this job's done. And I've had an absolute ball doing this. This is uh, much more my pace, because um, panel beating, I give it a crack, but it's certainly not my thing. But this is, uh, this is proper boiler making, and I had a very good time doing this. So yeah, see you guys next time.